Hello guys, welcome to Football Fandom UK. Hope you're having a cracking day. Um, today we're doing a, I'm doing a video with regards to the start of the Scottish Premier League or Premiership, um, whichever you wish to call it. Um, so we're going to go over the uh, fixtures that are up and coming guys and also talk a bit about uh, what you guys think uh, with regards to the Scottish League and I will give you my opinion and hopefully you guys will give me some feedback um, on the um, comments below so that uh, I can see what you guys are thinking with regards to the setup of the Scottish League and whether you think it can be improved, whether the uh, Scottish bosses can do more. Before we get into it, guys, if you like the videos that you're seeing, it'd be much appreciated if you could like, share and subscribe. It's the best way you can uh, help the channel grow. As I've said in the previous videos, the channel is very new, so we're still building and uh, we've not been going long. I believe it's... Uh, officially three weeks since i put the first video on so hopefully you guys are enjoying and hopefully i'm getting uh, better as each video goes so yeah guys so today we get to talk about scottish football um i'll be honest guys i'm not the most clued up when it comes to scottish football i am english so i have took note of the scottish league from a distance uh, due to the fact that i'm english i support an english club uh, so obviously very clued up with the English league because of my the club I support, um, but not as clued up uh, about the Scottish league. So hopefully you guys can uh, help me uh, get more knowledgeable, and I'll be helping myself by watching uh, more games as pos uh, this season as possible um, to try and understand uh, which uh, rivalries are which, and uh, obviously to see. Um, exactly how, how the uh, season unveils uh, generally with the Scottish clubs uh, like I say guys just being honest with you I, you know I do like Scottish football I've always watched it from a distance so I've took notice of results watched the odd game but never really took it um, took an interest in it enough um, to understand the ins and outs of how it works and uh, things like that but yeah, because we're doing, uh, because I'm now doing football fan in UK, I have uh, done some research to uh, get myself a bit more clued up with how things worked. And I'll be honest, I'll be honest, guys, I am a bit uh, a bit shocked at how the league actually works. Um, I thought it was obviously similar to the uh, English league in respect of relegation and. And promotion and and it is in a way but there's there's technicalities that i've come across um that seem to kick in um i one issue that i did come up against which seems to be i think i think there is a similar rule within the english league but i don't think it <coughs> excuse me guys i don't think it really ex, um affects very many english teams but uh, this issue what i'm going to point out to you guys you'd probably be more aware of it than i am but apparently in 2003 which is a while back now um falkirk should have been promoted um and were not allowed to because of the size of their stadium apparently um and motherwell should have been relegated um because they lost they was bottom of the league and didn't get relegated um, because of Falkirk not having a big enough stadium um, to come up into the uh, the top tier of Scottish football, which I found quite surprising. I mean, it is a good few years ago. A good, sorry, guys, a, bit, a good few years ago. Uh, getting a bit tongue-tied there. Um, so it's not like recent. I don't know if it happens much, but I did pick up on that whilst I was uh, doing the research for, for today's show. Um, so yeah guys I don't know what you think about that whether how many of are actually aware of that actually happening um, I was surprised because I thought it was uh, it wasn't really a fair reason for, for a team not to come up as long as they've got a reasonable safe safe ground that's all that should matter how many it fits it should be irrelevant it should just be as long as the ground's safe to host the games um, so it seemed that seemed a bit uh, a bit unfair from my point of view but like I say it was a good few years ago um, so, as I understand it, guys, uh, I'm going to give you my explanation to what my thinking is with regard to the Scottish League. And uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if I'm misinterpreting what I've what research I've done. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll be very much appreciated for your input and your feedback. Um, so, as I understand it, 12 teams in the Scottish League... And they play each other three times during the course of the season... Um, which for me that that seems a bit bizarre because 
that means that one you play in a home and away game, and then the third game um, is it, it could be an advantage or it could be a disadvantage um, relevant to uh, whether you you know you're playing at home or whether you're playing away or obviously the team that you're playing as well because one team at that particular point in time in time of the season. Uh, could be on the right roll and you've got to play them away when they're firing on all cylinders and your team might not be firing on all cylinders. So that seemed, seemed a bit bizarre to me, guys, but I'd love to know your uh, input with regards to that because you guys are watching it all the time with your Scottish fans and you will be more knowledgeable than I am to whether that is actually a good thing, whether it, it works in a, in a positive way or whether it doesn't. Um, I was like I say, I, I was a bit surprised by it. Now there's also this other thing of uh, that uh, apparently towards the end of the season, that the team, the, the league is split into two parts, um, and the bottom half teams have to play each other or play an extra game against each other or something, and the top half teams play an extra game against each other, uh, which. Like I said, guys, I'm only giving you my point of view from an outsider looking into the Scottish League as, as a newcomer, shall we say. Because like I said, I've always took notice of Scottish results and watched the occasional game, but never really absorbed it enough to understand how it all works. So my opinion might seem a bit irrelevant, but obviously, guys, I want to give Scottish football a fair coverage as well as English football. So, yeah, just uh, trying to get that point across to you guys. So, sorry to go off the track a bit there. Um, but, yeah, um, so I, I don't know. I don't understand how this splitting the league in two halves is a positive. Is it a positive? Is it a negative? You guys let me know because, like I say, I, did, I was not aware of it at all. I didn't even realise. I mean, I found the, the, the three games... Um, between each team a bit bizarre because in most I think most leagues 90% of leagues in the world at least uh, play just a home game and an away game against each team through the course of the season so this extra third game seems a bit of a an imbalance shall I say um, is, is, is it you guys tell me because I am a bit stunned with that one but like I said I found this this six um, six against six or whatever you want to call it. I don't know how do how, how you word, word it in Scotland with regards to splitting the league in a, two halves towards the end of the season. Is that a positive thing? Does it bring uh, more um, of a competitive side or not more of an edge to the league or is it negative? Because as I say, guys, for me looking in and being a, a, a bit newer, a lot newer than you guys knowing about Scottish football, I was a bit stunned to learn that. I thought that was a bit... Um, well, I've definitely thought some teams, it would appear to me, would have, have a problem with that um, with regards to be it being a disadvantage to them. Uh, I don't know what you guys think. I would love to know what you guys think. So please leave some feedback or some comments so I can gauge what you guys are thinking. Um, so, yeah, so we start anyway. We get into the games that are coming on the opening weekend and... Uh, the games, the, the first Saturday of the season is going to be uh, uh, four games uh, and the, the the games, uh, four games on the Saturday, sorry, and two games on the Sunday. Um, so the four games on a Saturday, on the Saturday, sorry, are Celtic v St. Johnston, Hibernian v St. Murren, uh, Livingston v Motherwell and Ross County, Ross County v uh, Hamilton Ac Academic. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, and the Sunday games are Kilmarnock v Rangers and Aberdeen v Hearts of Middle Ovian. Now, to me, as a newcomer, I would say if I was watching any one of them games or if I was looking to watch them, I would, will, like I say, guys, I will try and get as much Scottish football as I can, as I can get, you know, where... Uh, that I can see or, or you know, that streams. Because, but like I say, down here in in England, uh, Scottish football is not not greatly um, advertised, shall we say? Uh, that I mean, I know a few years ago the national radio stations used to cover it a bit more, um, but they don't seem to be doing it as much these days. Um, obviously, occasionally I think they do do coverage of. Uh, 
of the Rangers Celtic games. Um, but apart from that, they don't really give it much coverage, which is, and I, I, I think it's a bit out of order, consider, especially their national radio station. And for example, if it's uh, uh, whatever, whatever radio stations, we know there's national radio stations for sport, for news, for music, for different different topics. But if, if they do do football um, and they are uh, a radio station that is heard in Scotland, then in my opinion, they should be giving Scottish football some coverage um, because it's it's only right. They, they, you know, they appreciate you guys listening to their station. So why not appreciate you guys as fans and give Scottish football uh, a bit more attention um, to highlight um, a, a great country's league, uh, you know, it, some people say that Scottish football is not the greatest, um, but in my opinion, it deserves the same respect as any other league. Um, so it, therefore, if a national radio station or a national TV station is covering uh, Scotland with everything else, why are they not covering it with, uh, with the football? Uh, so yeah that's just my opinion guys anyway but uh, yeah so the standout game for me on the opening weekend which I would say would and I might be wrong you guys could disagree with me and you probably will if you don't support these teams but the, the standout game to me looks to be Aberdeen v Hearts um, that's on Sunday um, I just I don't know that I, like I say I'm not as familiar with the Scottish rivalries is obviously it's very well known about Rangers and Celtics rivalry but with respect to uh, all the other rivalries um, and banter and stuff uh, I'm not as familiar with them but hopefully during the course of this season and with the help of you guys I'll become more aware of which clubs actually have serious uh, deep deep rivalries uh, and which clubs are just you know um, what you might call run of the mill games so yeah, guys, uh, is that a good fixture? Uh, is that is that um, a fixture that normally chucks up a good amount of goals, a bit of fight and scrap between the players? And I don't mean physical fighting, guys. I mean I mean like you know just the will to win for the fans. That's what I mean when I say fighting. Um, yeah. So uh, so yeah, I, I would uh, at a glance, guys, if I was to pick a game to go and watch this weekend. I think that, that would be the one for me. But as I say, guys, I'm not as knowledgeable as you lot in Scotland. Um, so I'll uh, I'll always be honest with you as best possible, guys. Um, but yeah, as I say, that, that stand, seems to be the standout game for me of the weekend. Um, I'm not sure. Livingston uh, Motherwell looks like that could be uh, an interesting game as well. Um, and um, I would expect, uh, no disrespect to St Johnston, but Celtic at home will probably be too strong for St Johnston. Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, and Rangers uh, against Kilmarnock, that's an away game. So I'm not sure that Kilmarnock are a tricky team to play at home. Um, as I say, guys, you guys are a lot more in the know than me about Scottish football. So I would very much appreciate your input and feedback into the uh, comments below. So let me know uh, what games I should be looking out for and trying to catch in respect of they are great games to watch in great fixtures um, and obviously uh, very interesting to watch in respect of plenty of goals, plenty of action and um, and you know that for example, guys in England when I know there's certain games where like you're gonna get a real humdinger of a game because the teams are closely matched. Uh, they like playing each other, um, like, uh, you know, and it doesn't always have to be a derby game, you know, it's like, for example, uh, some people don't class Man United and Liverpool as a derby, but whenever they play, there's fireworks, do you know what I mean, so to speak. Um, another game I would say would probably be uh, Blackburn Burnley, that's another fixture that's obviously not in the, you know, top echelons of the league, but uh, of, of, of English football, but I think whenever they play, uh, there seems to be quite a bit of fireworks with that game as well. Uh, sorry, that fixture. So, yeah, guys, I'm just giving you them as comparisons so that you guys can give me some feedback and let me know which of the games that I should be looking out for during the course of the season, which games that, that uh, you know, are going to have real, uh, be mouth-watering, shall we say. So, yeah, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. As I say, with the channel being new, and I'm being honest with you guys, me being new to Scottish football in respect of not very clued up with it, um, 
I um I just got I thought I'd get a short video on for you guys today to uh, give a give a, a the coverage that is relevant to Scottish football, uh, the coverage that the the clubs deserve on behalf of the fans. Um, so yeah, guys. Um, just a last note. Um, I have recorded this uh, video late. Um, so the the result again uh, for Celtic in Europe was uh, two nil. So they go through to the next round on aggregate seven nil. Um, which is a great result for Celtic and, 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 in my opinion, a great result for Scottish football because I'm, from where I'm standing, I want to see more Scottish clubs um, having success in Europe. And no, I don't mean necessarily winning things straight away because it would be great for a Scottish team to win something in Europe. I'm not saying it wouldn't, but to at least see Scottish clubs uh, building uh, for for you know for the future and uh, giving themselves uh, more uh, more of a chance of doing uh, improving themselves in Europe that'd be absolutely awesome for Scotland and for UK football generally. So yeah, guys, if you've liked today's video, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, hope you have. Hopefully, sorry, you have. Um, and I will certainly look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. If you'd like to join me, take care for now and goodbye.